if we look at the, the kind of capabilities we've been specifically focusing on, they really focus into a couple of areas. Well, the first big one is, I think, stereoscopic film imaging. Uh, we've had a lot of demand for uh, more tools and uh, more consistency across the stere- of, of workflow for stereoscopy. I think when we look at stereoscopic production, it really is a, a workflow problem. You, you know, as we can from everything from planning production to, uh, to to execution of the production to the, to right down to the final grading. And there is no standardised process for doing that. There is no standardised workflow for doing that. And uh, it can be pretty challenging because there are many different types of stereo display technology, so how do you drive consistency throughout the production. Uh, at the same time, we introduced stereo capability into three of our products, into Maya and 3D animation products, into Toxic, our compositing and visual effects products, and uh, into uh, Lustre, our digital grading products. And, and again, the purpose there was really so that we could start building a, a stereo pipeline that's consistent from good CGI, compositing, and grading. Uh, other big things that we've been working on is really the 2D to 3D uh, kind of workflow. Uh, we obviously announced earlier that we acquired RealViz. RealViz have been partners with us and we've been using their technology in Flame in the past. We've obviously since then moved on and started developing our own 3D uh, tracking systems and the ability to extract 3D uh, data from 2D images. But RealViz too have also developed some interesting technology and so you know we kind of started talking uh, again about you know future direction and realized that made sense for us to really work closely together mm-hmm. and so we acquired them uh, and uh, you know, we actually announced at Seagraph the sti- uh, Stitcher 2009 and the Image Model 2009. But ultimately one of the things we see as a, a big trend in the industry is, is the increasing use of CG in the, and, and the virtualization kind of the production environment so that CG is not kind of an afterthought you tag on in post-production to your project, it actually becomes central to the production chain and the ability therefore to integrate 2D elements into what's essentially this virtual production environment, this 3D environment is becoming more and more important than the other way around where you actually do a lot of 2D production and integrate 3D. You really see, this is, this is only, I mean we're starting to see this in kind of the most avant-garde uh, uh, productions such as James Cameron's Avatar, Avatar and things like that, where they really are starting to do this whole, what we would call virtual cinematography, uh, as, a, uh, as, a, as, a, as a kind of change to the more traditional side. And I, I think it'll be, a, you know, this is this is just the beginning of, of a trend that will that will happen a, a, a over the next, you know, probably five to ten years, as, as, as product, these production environments become highly virtualized, especially for the, the big visual effects and CG type movies. Uh, uh, we've been working also uh, with some of our top customers to uh, to to build uh, technologies such as motion builders so that they allow for onset direction capabilities, uh, uh, as well as you know uh, real time storyboarding, pre visualization, and the ability to, for example, a director to move the camera and see that interact in real time with the 3D environment so they can actually use their their, 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 their skills to actually help direct the CG uh, components of the movie rather than use the traditional approach was just review and approve whatever the CG departments were giving you and how we want to give them abilities to, to in the early stages of planning and production make creative decisions that then can be easily translated into the CG production pipeline. And, I mean, stereoscopy is the same thing. We've been working on stereoscopic production with our partners like Disney and DreamWorks for several years now. And, uh, and now we're starting to roll it out the products from the, the, the based on the experiences we've learned. I think working on these projects is, is going to help uh, you know, us roll that out through our products in the next few years as well. Can I just ask on 3D stereoscopic, yeah. uh, what you would see as the, uh, I guess, the challenges, the post-challenges, uh, comparing live action versus uh, animated? 3D stereoscopic. There's a r- huge difference between CG and, and uh, live action uh, stereoscopic. Uh, the, first of all, CG you have a hot, complete control of the environment, so the, you 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 eliminate one of the biggest production hurdles in, in life, which is you know the fact you need two cameras and you basically need to manage that level of complexity in the in, in the production chain. In the in the in the CG production, you have two, the cameras are virtual, so they, they you know they can be completely controlled. 
by the thing that, that, that you don't have a problem of discrepancies in, in cameras such as you know two, two different lenses there's always going to be slight differences between two different lenses two different they're never going to be exactly identical in a computer environment they can be exactly identical so all you have to worry about is the separation <laughs> uh, so uh, so you can, you, you, you can completely control convergence you can completely control everything in the, C, in the CG environment so you have that complete control so it really removes a lot of the headaches I think when we look at stereoscopic what, what is making stereoscopy more viable today one of, one, one of the biggest hurdles of stereoscopy was removed by digital projection mm. so what happened was the, the display problem was, was by and large solved by the advent of digital projectors that made it easier to produce and project high quality and cheaper much much cheaper to project high quality uh, stereo images and, and remove uh, some of the hurdles that create, create disorientation or or all the other unwanted side effects with stereo projection. So stereo projection quality improved and uh, reliability improved. So, uh, so, so, so that hurdle was, was taken care of by digital projection. On the flip side, and, and then when you look at, at CG productions, you've got a complete control of the environment. So as long as you plan your story, you actually plan it as a stereo production, you can control that environment. And that's important because when you're building stereo projects, you know, of course you can throw in stereo wow effects, and that might work for certain types of movies. If you want to create a stereo experience, it's really about understanding the three-dimensionality of your story. And you have to plan it as a 3D volume experience, I suppose, it, as being engaged in that 3D experience, so it's non-obtrusive, unless you want it to be. Like, obviously you might want a certain level of, you know, the effects that come out and grab you on the screen, or where you're trying to grab things that are flying out of you, or those kind of experiences. But very often, like, that's kind of... Uh, you can't run 90 minutes of that, basically. Mm. Yeah. So, so, and maybe you don't want to run ni uh, any of it at all. You just want the experience to be more engaging or immersive. And doing that in quite, in quite you know, clever storytelling and understanding the story in a different dimension. And that's what, uh, what several of the actor, uh, sorry, directors that are trying to, to, to create a stereoscopic experiences are actually very heavily focused on. Mm. Is, is trying not to you know, give you the, the wow fact that create these stereoscopic experiences. Uh, when it comes to live production, the biggest challenges are, you know, shooting it. I mean, ha shooting it is, is a challenge because uh, creating the stereo uh, separation on, on set is difficult. I mean, it's hard to do uh, in general, whether you're on location or on the sound stage. You have different challenges of, 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 of uh, setting up the cameras and controlling the cameras. And, uh, you know, the challenge of toe-in is, is, is a big one because you can try and create an increased one of the ways of trying to increase, uh, increase stereo effect is to, to actually uh, tow in the cameras or move or, or converge them, the, 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 lens, the, the lens planes themselves. Uh, and the challenge of that is that it creates an optical distortion and so that has to be fixed. So, so, so there are a lot of things which happen in the production environment where you're not exactly sure how that's going to going to necessarily, uh, what the repercussion that will have it when, you, when you hit the post-production phase. And the problem is when you hit the post-production phase and you identify a problem, it becomes very costly and expensive to fix mm -hmm. because you can't go back and shoot it. And so you have to do a lot of manual either data extraction mm -hmm. type processes and reconstruction processes and reconstruction in 3D to try and re-control or to change or reset those parameters. So unless you've really meticulously planned the production path so that you know what all this area separation is beforehand and you shoot it that way, it, you don't have a lot of control over that. You can't avoid you, what you got what you got when you hit the, it's, it is a garbage in, garbage out type phenomenon. It's not quite a garbage in, garbage out because post production can save it, but it comes at a cost and the production costs increase. So, uh, so, so that's part of the challenge of planning stereo and, and executing stereo and, and, and shooting the live action, which is why it's, it's more challenging to do live action than CG. And CG, because of the nature of the media, 3D media, you know, as, a, as an audience experience, it's kind of an easy next step for them to, to kind of, okay, it's all 3D and like making that, you know, stereo is, is, is a natural transition. So, so the challenges are definitely harder for doing it live action. So uh, I think that, you know, people are aware of the problems, they're looking at the problems, it's definitely more challenging to live action, but the problems aren't insurmountable and with good planning, good execution and a good story, those problems go away.